Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to the show. How are you guys? Doing well. Yes. Good, good, good. good. Okay, so let's go around the clock here. We'll start with uh, Matt. Um Explain to the folks, first of all, so just so you guys know, Matt is staying healthy. Good. good uh, uh, that's awesome, Matt. I would actually do something like that here if I could. So he's on the treadmill, just in case you're wondering. Matt, explain to the folks who you are and what you do. Yeah, sure. My name is Matt Longley, and I, I'm the founder of Gun Critic, but uh, mainly I'm a computer geek. So okay. I work on a computer all the time. I've been... Uh, doing e-commerce marketing, affiliate marketing, search engine optimization since about 2006. So quite yeah. a long time. Wow. Okay. Uh, my wife and I have five boys and uh, between them and computer work and knife making, stay pretty busy. Yeah. That sounds like uh, actually a lot of things, a lot of things that you're getting involved. Yeah. And so recently, um, what did you guys merge with gun with gun streamer? Did you take it over? What's the deal? What's going on? Cause we all were under yeah. the impression that gun streamer was shutting down, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, explain so, to us uh, what happened there. So my business partners, Rex, Rex, Got a call from Hickok 45 saying that Gunstreamer is going to shut down mm -hmm. and wondered if there's something that he could do to save it. Uh, so, yeah, he contacted me to get in touch with Austin. Mm -hmm. And we had a few phone calls. And, it, you know, it looked like, um, you know, Austin had a pretty good idea, but just was losing too much money. Mm -hmm. So we kind of felt the same way as Hickok that it, you know, it'd be a shame for all his hard work to mm -hmm. just be shut down and. For the platform to shut down, I know he mentioned a few guys that had had uh, put a lot of work into it. So, mm. yeah. So we uh, we didn't really, you know, it wasn't something we researched a lot, and we were like, we had this as a business model. We were planning to run with it. It was just one of those things that just is an opportunity that came up. And two things. I mean, I think there's uh, a lot of opportunity with it, but I also think it was a, you know, just a, too good of a platform to let, you know, mm -hmm. vanish. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's so the big news that I take out of all of that and uh, uh, John and Clover, feel free to jump in here if you guys have any questions. Um, but I'm glad that Hickok helped out here somehow, at least by making the connection, because, you know, um, I, I was really disappointed that Gunstreamer was going to be going away. And I'm, I'm glad something was able to be worked out here with you guys. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's news a little bit, right? Because maybe people never heard that before, that part of that. Before. About Hickok? Yeah. yeah. Well, kind of one, one thing that affects a lot of this is that whenever there's a high volume amount of uh, sales in the market, mm -hmm. a lot of the advertisers pull back on advertising dollars. So I think that it was a combination of you know, more people looking for guns, streaming video, mm -hmm. and then the, that with a lack of advertisers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got Matt here from Gunstreamer uh, slash Gun Critic that we're going to get into and talk to about what's going on with him as well as Clover and uh, with with Crump. Where do you guys want to start? Who wants to start here? Do you have any questions for for Matt Clover? Have you guys had a chance to uh, communicate? It, no, well, we, I haven't. No. Okay. I'm, I'm, John, John. John said he uh, he has something, so yeah, we'll let him okay. go. Okay, we'll do that. How do you plan on making a gun, sh a gun streamer profitable? Okay. Yeah, good question. That's fair. Well, just 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 <laughs> come <laughs> right out with it, John. Yeah, I was hoping you guys would have that's, some answers that's, to that. That's yeah, a big question. he was he was telling me before we started that he came on here so you could tell him. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, we've got a few different ideas. So the uh -huh. the first thing is we want to stop the bleeding. You know, there's a lot of expenses coming out of the website right now mm -hmm. and so Austin and I are looking into how we can cut back on expenses there's a few sites like Lipsy's and a few others that are streaming a lot of data from the platform mm -hmm. uh, so that that's one thing uh, the other thing is there's a couple different business models that we can add to the platform one is premium content mm -hmm. so think of like a Udemy or a Linda 
and uh, you know we try to make a place where uh, whether you're like a gunsmith and you want to sell courses or you're an instructor and you want to sell courses you could do that mm -hmm. so it'd be kind of a place to uh, allow your fans to transact with you and watch content that's skated okay so that that's one idea and i think that that would actually work well but we still want to have a place for people to put up free stuff too you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay what so, do you, what, um go ahead the, the free model is just you know ad based but that's mm -hmm. a pretty tough model you look at youtube they lost money for like 20 years you know, they just started making some money on their platform. So that's kind of tricky. You got to get your volume up high enough and have a pretty good um, amount of advertisers that are consistent. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, we're going to try to do that. I mean, Austin's intentions was he wanted to have a platform that was free and kind of an alternative to YouTube. But Gunstreamer kind of ended up being everybody's backup where they put all their data and a few of you guys really contributed and tried to make it try to make it work, but uh, you know the way it sat, it just it just had to make some changes, you know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know who has anything. I would say my first priority with GunStreamer, uh, and it's true, right? Most of us, myself included, we're using that as a backup, and I'm primarily on YouTube. I think that's just the way it works out. That's where there's a bigger audience. Um, I wish that there, there, um, you know, that we can make better usage of it myself. But the first thing I think it's important to have it exist, you know, because at some point we're going to run into a wall with YouTube and all these other places where even if we want to continue on there, as we are talking about the things that we're talking about, they're going to go no, and we're going to wind up where a lot of like even these conversations will have to be somewhere else and then the regular uh video like gun content that we do will have to be somewhere else so i want to make sure it exists and of course i want to figure out how to make it profitable for the people doing it so that exists it continues to exist and you know listen we we all need to uh live and uh eat feed ourselves and all that kind of stuff take care of our families bills etc so i mean that's the that's the first thing that's my thoughts on it what do you think clover well, you know, one thing that come to mind, I mean, it when, you know, when I heard the news, of course, that they were doing it, it sucked because two years ago, ago at SHOT Show, they really, they really busted, they really busted it. They really knocked it out of the park, mm -hmm. making connections and doing other things. And you hate to see that, you know, a year later. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I go back to, and, and, you know, I've talked to Austin and Ashley and Paul and all of them on a fairly regular basis, not lately. Uh, hung out with them, shot show this year, uh, talking about the platform, talking about what we can do as creators and other stuff. And, um, you know, I just go back to last year before shot show. I, I go back to YouTube pulling the plug on Hangouts and the opportunity potentially missed mm -hmm. by implementing some type of live streaming going on and we talked about you know i know there's a cost involved i know there's uh you know entry barriers involved um and I, I come from a tech space much like uh matt was talking about earlier and mm -hmm. so uh, i know it can be done um uh, and i know it can be done fairly reasonable and we we talked with uh, austin and him about that and said hey you know if nothing else implement some prime time slots five nights a week for an hour or two, get some nor some regular creators that are doing live content on the regular, and that'll create a uh, at least a push during those hours over to the platform. People, it's not just come and go, and they may or may not watch, and it's dependent upon somebody sharing something that they may watch later. But if you're going to watch this content, you have to go over there, and you have to go over there now. Mm -hmm. um, and you know his concerns. I don't. I don't remember them all. Obviously, monetary concerns was was part of it. Uh, but there was a resistance, almost like they wanted their own fully proprietary software build and everything else, rather than maybe going with something temporarily that um, that used you know used a stream key. We could use something like OBS, something like Skype. Uh, like you're using Hank here, and, mm -hmm. and we could stream through that stream key to the site, and they don't actually have to have. Uh, their own uh, software and stuff like that to do that with. They just have to have the ability to accept that that stream key, and they were just really resistant. And 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 you know, there's there's lots of things I'm sure I'm not privy to, so I don't want to put a lot on Austin and the crew over there. But uh, when this happened, 
long story short, I guess, and I know it's too late, is that I, I can't help but think back and think what would have happened. Where would they be now? How would it be different had they worked on instead of contributors at the time, which I've tried to use and I've tried to push. Um, what if they would have focused more on the live streaming aspect? Okay. All right. So uh, agree with that. there's a couple of things. There's a couple. You agree with that, John? 100%. If you look at uh, where even like Facebook, uh, they're pushing streaming a lot uh, and YouTube is. And that's mostly because of like platforms like Twitch. And it showed how profitable streaming can be. And streaming is, is the future of video content. I, I believe if you look at the, the market and how much streaming is taking over, and even on YouTube, uh, a couple of years ago, there was no one streaming, live streaming. And now, you look at the live streaming, it's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially and, in this environment, right? And almost all like content right creators are yeah. streaming. Oh, there's, stuff. yeah, you go into YouTube and you go into the live streaming stuff, and mm -hmm. it's insane what people are doing i mean tarot card readings and fortune telling to <laughs> prayer chains to watching the night sky it's wow. just insane the amount of people live streaming stuff yeah yeah okay. so, you know hank that's something that i brought up to austin mm -hmm. yesterday because mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned live streaming and, and he did say that what they ran into was um there would be a lot of if they open it up to everybody anyways mm -hmm. Uh, there would just be a lot of bandwidth usage is what he was thinking. So it was a cost issue at the time. Mm -hmm. And so we both talked about it. And he did think that, you know, at least in the initial stages, having some channels open, having some creators, having some shows would be, you know, a good way to test it out. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what uh, was mentioned. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel the same way. I mean, the biggest biggest hurdle we have is that, Monetization is pretty easy on most platforms, but for guns, you can't work with DoubleClick, you can't work with Google, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't work with all your traditional uh, SSPs, basically, the supply side mm -hmm. platforms. Mm -hmm. So, and then on, on our side, advertising is about 10 to 20 years behind. So, I remember, like, I started to try to uh, media company in 2012. And it was like pulling teeth back then. I mean, everybody was still using magazines mm -hmm. and yep. some radio. I mean, they were using billboards, but they didn't want to do anything digital. Mm -hmm. So now you have some companies that are open to digital, some co-op programs that actually support digital, you know, which is kind of crazy. They're just doing that. Mm -hmm. But really, I think to make something like that work, you know, even Gunstreamer in general, is we really need to get some manufacturers or bigger retailers to kind of get behind the platform and say yep. you know we're willing to put some money into this to make it happen you know yeah yeah make sure to check out hankstrange.com you can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts